Welcome to part four of Starting Outstanding Transplants, and I'm your host, Gary Hiley. And um, today we're going to talk about selecting seeds. First of all, uh, when you're talking about selecting seeds, you have to decide whether or not you want to have organic seeds or more conventional seeds. And uh, depending on what type of grower you are will determine that decision. But if you're going to grow something organically and you want to be certified organic, you must grow seeds that are organic certified. And you'll happen to see here on this particular uh, bush bean, it says USDA organic on it. So you can rest assured that this one would be okay to use, whereas conventional seed, uh, if you're going to be an organic grower, not something you want to do. Uh, another thing you have to decide on is do you want to grow what we call hybrids, which are specific crosses between two parents, and they give you various characteristics that you're looking for like uniformity of harvesting date or it might be the overall productivity of the plant or, or disease resistance or something like that. Another thing that you can select between is do you want hybrids or uh, what we call heirloom seeds or open pollinated and you can have open pollinated varieties that are heirlooms also but first of all hybrids are varieties that are the result of specific crosses and you have hybrids because you may want uniformity in when you harvest the plant, or it might be uh, certain types of flavor, it may be disease resistance. There are a number of different characteristics that people want in hybrids. And you can't save the seeds of hybrids because they start to revert back to what the parents were, and you don't have that uniformity anymore. Now, with heirloom seeds, these are seeds that have been around, and these aren't heirlooms here, but uh, they've usually been around for 50 years or more and they're open pollinated which means uh, they're not a specific cross they receive their pollen from within the same plant and you can collect those seeds and those plants will be true to what they were year after year after year obviously open pollinated are usually less expensive and you can save them and cut down on the cost of buying seeds now another thing you will find when you buy seeds some companies will treat their seeds with a fungicide, for instance, to prevent um, rotting in the soil, especially if somebody goes out and plants the seed when the soil is not ideal for germination. Um, you do not usually have planted seed with organic seed. This is usually with uh, regular hybrids and those types of things, especially something like some of the super sweet sweet corns, which are fairly weak germinators, especially if the cold soil is present. And uh, so that Fungicide on there helps to prevent rot until the soil warms up a little bit. Also, sometimes we'll have coated seed. And coated seed is, um, is done primarily to make it easier for you to handle the seed. Some seeds are extremely small and difficult to handle. So they're coated with a clay material and uh, a clay-like material. And it makes it much easier for you to handle when you're trying to put those seeds in the ground. Now another thing about buying seeds is I always suggest people buy seeds early if you want your best buys. A lot of times at the local garden centers, they may have up to 25% off if you're buying way before you're going to start them. But as you get closer to the garden season, you lose those discounts. Some garden catalogs will come as early as December and they will offer um, discounts also. And uh, they may be to your advantage or they may not be. Some may say you can get $25 free if you buy $25, but if you don't get that $25, the other stuff's not free either, so you need to read all the fine print. Now, some people would ask is it better to buy your seeds from local sources or is it better to buy from a catalog? Well, that really depends on what you have locally because there are numerous seed companies and not all uh, places will carry the same seeds, especially if you have some especially uh, greenhouses or garden centers that will have some unusual uh, companies. And But the thing about a uh, seed catalog is you can buy many, many different varieties of a particular plant. For instance, uh, totally tomatoes. You can buy literally up to 100 varieties or more of just tomatoes. And most garden centers can't carry that many cultivars. So you do have some advantages. And if you are like me and you'd like to get things through the mail, uh, I like to always send in some uh, seed purchases. But I can't buy everything out of town. I like to support the local people too. So I tend to go to garden centers. And if I can't find something I'm specifically looking for, then I will order it through various catalogs. Now another uh, thing that some people like to do is they like to buy uh, 
um, award-winning plants. And a lot of the garden catalogs will carry them, but I like to go to a website called the All America Selections. And this is a private organization that started back in the 1930s. And they were interested in developing new varieties that were of specific interest to consumers. And we like things that don't have a lot of problems. They bloom beautifully. We like different plants because sometimes you go to a garden center and you see the same old stuff. So these are new plants that are being developed by seed companies from all over the world. And they send their seeds in to the various test gardens in the United States and Canada. And they are tested for two years. And then as the judges go around, they decide which ones are superior. And if they receive an award, they get what's called the All-America Selection. Now, uh, for many years, they just had one award, but now the awards are broken up into regions. So they may have an award for the Southeast uh, or the Great Lakes states, which means those varieties grow particularly well in those areas, but not necessarily over the entire country. But they do have some cultivars that win awards for the entire nation, so they can be grown in any part of the country. In addition to that, they have flowers that receive awards, uh, vegetables, herbs, and the nice thing is if you're looking for a new color in a particular flower, um, then this is one of the places you might want to check out. The nice thing about this site is it will also list the companies where you can order the seeds so they make it easy for you to find it. It is very difficult to find the newest uh, selections in the garden centers. They don't pick them up as quickly. Uh, you will see some of the older ones there, but uh, if you wanted something from, say, 2017, unless they're a very special greenhouse, they're not likely to have them. So you'll have to start them yourself and see. Another thing that we can consider, which most people don't consider when they're selecting seeds, is the nutrient potential of that particular variety. Not all carrots are the same. I mean, there are a number of different varieties of carrots out here. I just have a couple right here. And um, when you look up the description of some of these plants in the garden catalog, you'll find that some may have more vitamin A than others. Um, for instance, caro, which is a C-A-R-O, which is a tomato, has higher levels of certain nutrients. And so if you're interested in getting the best bang for your buck, you can do a little extra searching and find uh, varieties that have new, higher nutrient contents than others. People also choose their varieties based on disease resistance. If you have a variety that's more resistant to disease, you don't have to spend as much time treating, in, in other words, spraying. I don't like to spray unless I absolutely have to, but some of the newer varieties that are coming out are more resistant to diseases than some of the heirlooms and older varieties. So that's something that you want to take into consideration also. And of course, we should also consider growth habit. For instance, these green beans here, you can buy them as a bush bean or you can buy them as a pole bean. Or tomatoes, for instance, um, and I don't see any tomato seedlings here right now, but tomatoes can be indeterminate in their growth habit, which means they continue to grow until they're frosted and they can get to be five or six feet tall or more. Obviously, that gives you a bit of a challenge when you're trying to stake them. Or uh, you can get what's called determinate tomatoes, which means that they top out at a certain height, usually around three feet or so. And um, the thing is, when you have the determinant types, they tend to produce their tomatoes over a shorter period of time so you don't have to harvest as much. Whereas the indeterminate ones, you can get tomatoes all through the season up until the time you get frost. So there's some advantages and disadvantages to both. Then of course some of us uh, don't have a lot of space for growing things and we may want to grow bush type cultivars or certain types of pumpkins and squash that won't run all over your garden anymore. They tend to have more of a bush type growth habit. In addition to that, uh, you may have some varieties that you'd like to grow in containers and there are some cultivars of various plants that are specifically bred to grow in containers. Of course, the size of the container makes a difference as to how successful you're going to be and what you're trying to put in it. For instance, most tomatoes require a fairly large container, so if you stuff them in a small grow bag and it's a very large indeterminate tomato, they're not going to do as well as they could if they're in the ground. Now, sometimes you may have seeds that you save over the, the course of the years and on the back of the, con the container, they will tell you what year they should have been sold by. And depending on what type of seed we're talking about will determine how uh, long that seed is viable. For instance, onions and, and corn, for instance, need to be used within one year that you purchase the seed. Whereas anything in the coal crop family, like broccoli, coal, rabi, Brussels sprouts, collards, those seeds can stay in good condition for up to five years if they're 
uh, stored properly and the proper storage would be cool and dry conditions. So um, <clears throat> if you're not sure what shape those seeds are in, you could do a simple germination test. And what I normally do is I'll take a uh, paper towel, I'll moisten it with water, and then I'll um, put some seeds on it, fold it over, put it in a, a baggie of some sort that I can seal, and then I'll put it in a fairly warm place. It doesn't have to have light um, unless it's something like lettuce. And I usually put it on top of the refrigerator because it's fairly warm up there. And then I will check over a period of a few days. And if you haven't had any germination after about two weeks, then it's a pretty good bet those seeds aren't going to be viable. If they pop out within a few days, depending on what type of seed it is, uh, you know those seeds are useful and can continue to be used in the garden. If you're not sure how long your seeds will last, one of the things you can do is check some of the different charts that are available online or in various gardening books and it will list the various seed types and we're talking vegetables here and how long those seeds are viable. And that'll go a long way to help you to be successful. I hope this has been uh, helpful for you and in our next video we'll talk about planting and germination of seeds. Thanks for watching. This is Gary. See you later.